It's time for us to study the word, the, the study the word of God. And I want us to um, get into the first quote that I have for you, friends. The next one. Somebody said this. Somebody said this. So I want to start off with this, this quote. It says, revival is good. Reformation is better. But renewal, renewal is what God is really aiming at. Do you agree with that? Revival is good, reformation is better, but renewal is what God is really aiming at. God's message for you this morning is that new beginnings are not just possible, they are also indispensable, just as in the time of Josiah, king, king of Judah. So before we pray and before I take you to the Bible, I want to give you a little uh, historical background of what we are going to be studying today. I mentioned King Josiah is because we are going to study about Josiah. Who was Josiah? Josiah became king at eight years old. Yes, you heard right, eight years old. He became king because his father was assassinated. Josiah's dad, uh, Amon, was a very poor example. He followed the Baals and led the people of Judah into rejection of God and God's ways. But his example was his own father, Manasseh. The Bible says that Josiah's grandfather, Manasseh, desecrated God's temple by instituting worship of idols in it. The Bible says that he led the people to practices that were worse than the people that God drove out in the first place, including, listen, including child sacrifice. God tried to speak to Manasseh, but neither he nor the people listened, so they were attacked and subjugated by a foreign king. Finally, Manasseh turned to God and, his th and, and things improved, but he died and his son, Amon, became king. Now, Amon tried to get the country to go back to idol worship, but was assassinated. The people then made Josiah, eight years old, the king. Now open your Bibles, please. With this in our minds, with this, list, this little history in mind, open your Bibles in, in the book of Kings, the second book of Kings in chapter 23. Today, we are going to study chapter 22 and chapter 23 really fast. So, so buckle up and get ready for this high-speed journey. 2 Kings chapter 23 and, verses, and verse 25. If you dare say amen. 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse 25 says. Now before Josiah, there was no, like, no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul, with, and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, nor after him did any arise like him. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we are here to hear your voice, not the voice of a human being. We are here to worship you, not worship anything else. And so we pray that as we continue studying your word, Father, you will speak loud. Get our preoccupations away from us. Get our worries away from us, Father, and help us to get connected through your Holy Spirit to you in such a way that our minds will be renewed. This is our prayer in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what 25, verse 25 or chapter 23 says about this king, Josiah? 
There was no other king like Josiah. Surely, friends, surely we can learn a thing or two from a person the Bible speaks so highly about. Don't you think? I said, don't you think? So, so what I'm going to do is to take you through his life to see what we can learn today to apply it in our lives. And I'm going to go from the effect to the cause. Not from the cause to the effect, but from the effect to the cost in chapters 23 and 23, 22 and 23 again. Josiah, for him to be described by the Bible in verse 25 in this way, Josiah went through experiences, uh, went to experience a renewal. Josiah the king experienced a renewal, and that's why in the last verse, in one of the last verses of chapter 23, he is described in that way, in, the, in this way. The last verse of his life, Josiah experienced a renewal. So how can I experience a renewal is my question, that, the question that I want to deal with this morning. The first, the first way that we can renew, our, renew, experience a renewal is that we are to experience the renewal of the ways that Josiah experienced. Again, how old was Josiah to start experiencing that renewal? How old was he? Verse 1 of chapter 22, 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 1 says that he was 8 years old when he became a king of Ju the king of Judah. 8 years old, friends. Parents, do you hear? 8 years old. Sister White, Ellen G. White says that, that at that age, Josiah already feared the Lord. Josiah, at eight years old, feared the Lord. And many parents say, no, my kid is too little. He doesn't understand. He doesn't know. Yes, they do understand, parents. They do understand. See, no later than eight years old, your, your kids will be decided for drugs, for sex, for the wrong companies. And that is why you as a parent need to understand that your kids at eight years old, they can make Jesus their best friend. But at that age, because he feared God, Josiah decided to renew his ways. Josiah at the age of eight decided to renew his ways. In verses 3 and 7, same chapter 22 of 2 Kings... In verses 3 and, 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 and 7, we will find that, that he has started doing certain things. Again, we're going from the effect to the cause. What is that that we find in verses 3 uh, th uh, through 7? Is that Josiah, as being the king, he saw a need in the, in the temple of God. He saw a need in the house of God. And he has started repairing and beautifying the house of the Lord. See, I'm, I'm, I'm so pleased when I come during the week, uh, uh, in the evening, especially during uh, Wednesday and Thursday, to find uh, an army of dedicated servants of God here cleaning and beautifying the church. And some of you don't even know why is it that the church is always clean. Some of you might think that we pay a company for them to come in and clean. No, no, no. These are volunteer, volunteers that come every week, every week, faithfully to have this church clean and beauty for the Lord and for you. But while Josiah was doing that, beautifying, repairing the house of the Lord, verse 8 says, and I put it, I, I put it on the screen for you, verse 8 says, then Helkiah, the high priest, said to Shaphan the scribe, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. And Helkiah gave the book to Shaphan and he read it. When, when they were repairing, they were beautifying, they were cleaning the house of the Lord, they found uh, the lost book. Now, Think with me, reason with me, friends. This is a temple. This is a church. Everything that they did there was based on that, on that book that they just found. My question is, what were they doing before? 
Why were they basing their ways if they didn't know about this book? Because it's just now that they find the book. They found the way, therefore, to a spiritual renewal because it was here where everything started. Some scholar says that what they found in, 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 when they found this lost book was the, a part of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 specifically. So they, 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 the king, when he's repaying the temple, he sends his, one of his servants, he, ser, he sends uh, uh, Shephan to see the high priest. And when Shephan comes, sent by the king, Josiah, he meets Helkiah, the high priest, and he says, yes, the church is looking good. The church is clean. This is getting beautiful and beautiful and beautiful. But guess what? I found something that I want to share with you. I found the book. He found the book, the high priest, Helkiah. He read the book. He got so excited about what he read that as soon as he saw uh, uh, an ambassador from the, from the king, he comes to him and said, Shephan, you, you have to read this book. And he read the book. Shephan read the book. And the servant brings the book to the king. And now the king reads the book. And after the king, the high priest, the servant read the book. Now the Bible says in verses 8 through 11 that everyone read the book. And because everyone read the book of the covenant, friends, a spiritual renewal took place. You want to be renewed? You want to experience renewal? Read the book. See, friends, many of us, many of us that call ourselves Christians, we, if you go to, if, if you go, just go to this afternoon to your house, where, as you get back to your house, look for the book and you will see that the Bible is that book that is collecting dust more, more than anything else in your house. Because many of us don't open the book. And there is no way to get close to God if we don't open his book. The only way for you and I to experience re renewal is by the opening of the lost book. Okay, they opened the book. What happened after that? Verse 11 says that now it happened... When the king heard the words of the book of the law, that he tore his clothes. Do you hear? A king tearing his kingly clothes. Why? When he read the book, when the, he heard the holy words of this book, he experienced what we know as repentance. What is repentance, friends? Ken Josiah saw himself short of the glory of God. And when a person finds himself herself short of the glory of God, what has to come after is repentance. And repentance simply means you walk in one way and one day you find yourself before the beauty of God and you decide to you turn and go around in the ways of God. So your ways start matching God's ways. But till that moment, till the moment you decide to stop on your ways and turn around and start doing it God's way, you will have to continue living till you hit the wall. So Josiah tore his clothes as a symbol of repentance. He tore his clothes as a symbol of, of protesting against the system. Protesting against the unfairness uh, uh, and the injustices that the people of God, those who have been blessed so much, were living like. And why is he experiencing this at this moment? Because he decided... To open the book. The Bible calls this book the book of the law. And you know that this word law comes from the Hebrew Torah. And the Torah simply means a set of instructions. And that's what this book is, is friends. 
When you open this book, you are following the instructions that the Lord wants you to follow. You, you are reading the instructions that the Lord wants you to follow in your life so that you may be a better parent, a better son, a better daughter, a better co-worker, a better spouse, a better grandmother, grandson. Friends, you want to be a better person? Open and read God's book. Amen. The Bible and the Bible alone will bring us to experience a renewal on our ways like it happened with Josiah. You want to experience a renewal of your ways like Josiah did? Read the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God, friends. When you open this book, you have the opportunity to hear the sweet voice of God. And once you do that, then you will experience and you will be the solution of this world. Because you will become agents of change. And this is what we find in the book, in the book of Prophets and Kings. And, and this is page 624. Just hear to the solemn words of, of, of the inspired writer. He says, in this age of the world, when Satan is seeking through many fault agen agencies to blind the eyes of men and women to the, blind, the binding claims of the law of God, there is need of men and women who can cause many to tremble at the commandment of our God. There is need of true reformers who will point transgressors to the real lawgiver and teach them that the law of, of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. There is need of men mighty in the scriptures, men whose every word and, ex, and act exalts the statutes of Jehovah. Men who seek to strengthen faith. Teachers are needed, oh so much, who will inspire hearts with reverence and love for the scriptures. People who live according to God's word are needed in this world to be followed, to, do, to be looked up, and to be the guidance of this world. Who are these people? Who are these people? Who are these people, friends? Where are they? Have you found anyone looking for God? Have you found anyone opening this book? Have you found anyone trying to follow God's will in this world? In chapter 22 of 2 Kings, we find this Josiah doing this exactly what we're talking about here. In verses 13 and 14, after reading the Bible, this is what the, the Bible says about the Jos Josiah the king. He reads, he reads the book of the law. That was, and this book brought him closer to God. And because of this, the Bible says in verses 13 and 14, he inquires from God. From God. But he doesn't come because of sin, friends. You have to understand that because of sin, we, uh, sin broke this direct communi communication that we have with God. And because of that, God has to bring people to help us communicate with him. And the Bible calls these people prophets. How do they call them, friends? Prophets. Most of the, Bi most of the Bible writers are called prophets. And what they are is simply the middle person. The person that brings a message from God for us. Prophets. At the time that Josiah was the king, there were famous prophets around. We have Jeremiah. We had uh, we have uh, Zephaniah, but when the king wanted to inquire from God to know what God's will was for him in his kingdom, he didn't go to Zephaniah, he, get, he didn't go to Jeremiah, he went to a woman. Do you hear? He didn't go to a male prophet, he went to a female prophet. He didn't go to a male prophet in a patriarchal society, he went to a prophetess or a female prophet. Do you want to renew your ways? 
Do you want to change your ways? I have one piece of advice for you and for me. Listen to the prophets. Listen to the prophets. See, friends, when they went to inquire from the prophets so they can hear the will of God, they started renewing their ways, matching their ways with God's ways. And when we do that, we also renew our faith in God. And this is what verses 21, uh, chapter 23 and verse 21 says. Then the king commanded all the people saying, keep the Passover of the Lord, of the, uh, to the Lord your God and as it is written in the book of the covenant. Josiah found out that these people are missing one of the greatest celebrations that was given by God to these people. The Passover. Do you remember what the Passover stand, stands or stands for? Do you know what that stood for, friends? There was one king, a pagan king, who did not listen to the prophets. The prophet that was sent to this king was Prophet Moses. He was sent, uh, he was sent by God to this king with one sole mission. Let my people go. But this king, instead of listening to the prophet, to the prophet, he decided to plug his ears and he didn't want to listen to the prophet. And the prophet came once, came twice, came twice, and he didn't listen to the prophet. And you know what happened with them until one last opportunity. If you do not let my people go, the firstborn of every household will die. And the mission for those who wanted to be protected was simple. God says, all that you have to do is sacrifice an animal, use the, the blood of that animal, and put it on the doorpost. If the, the destroyer angel passed by, come, comes, he will see the blood on the doorpost, and he will pass by, he will pass over that place. So it's called Passover because when the destroyer came to that marked, sealed house, he will pass over the house. Therefore, the first child, the firstborn, was not sacrificed. Was that difficult? Was that, was that mission of just putting blood on the doorpost and protect your son, was, was that difficult, you think? What do you think? It was not difficult. And if I was there, I would will, I will maybe reason that. Why? I mean, blood. What is the meaning of that, friends? The lesson that I get out of this is that sometimes we don't understand what God wants. But you and I need to follow it, need to do it anyhow. Because now, because God knows what is best for me. Because not God knows what is best for you. And when he requires something from me, I better do it because it's for my benefit. And so every year they will, they will celebrate that their son continue living because of the angel passing over their house. So when they celebrated Passover, they were celebrating the goodness of God. When they were celebrating Passover, they were, they were celebrating uh, uh, their total trust in him. We don't understand why you want us to do this. We don't, we don't understand why you are doing this, but we are doing it anyhow. They celebrate Passover, celebrating their trust, their total trust in God. Because God saved them. Because God sustained them. Because God protects them, protected them. Because God provided for them. And this is the same thing that God is doing with, with us today, friends. God, is, God saves us. God sustains us. God protects us. God also provides for us. Can I get a witness here in this house? Yes. Josiah did something else. In chapter 23, verses 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 12, 11... 
and verse 24, we will find something very in common. Again, the verses are 4, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, and 24. They all have something in common. Josiah commanded everyone in his kingdom to get rid of all the things, all the people that didn't have to do anything with the Lord. This is the lesson that we learned from Josiah. You want to renew your ways? You want to get closer to the Lord? Get rid, get rid of things that don't have to do anything with God. And many times will mean to put those movies away. Hello? And many times that will mean to put that music away. Good morning, church. Many times it will mean to put some people away. My young people, sometimes your friends, sometimes those friends don't, won't bring you close to God. And the friends that don't bring you close to God bring you away from God, take you away from God. And that's what is dangerous. As long as you keep on having those friends in your life really close to you, as long as you do that, you will continue walking away from God and the renewal will not be part of your experience. In verse 5, we found that, he, that Josiah commanded to, to remove all the idolatrous people and items. I mean, imagine there was prostitution happening in the temple of God. Prostitution. And you will think, that was just for the Israelites. We don't do that anymore. Really? There are many things, Father, friends, there are many things that we do to our Father that are worse than prostitution. Because in many areas we are selling ourselves. Josiah closed all the venues to false worship. All the venues that could take him or his people away from the Lord again. And I want to emphasize that again. Because it happens again and again, friends. When you go and study the story of the Israelites, it's like they didn't get it. It was, it was just a vicious cycle. They were in rebellion today. They repented tomorrow. And the next day, they were back to their old ways. They were repented today. They were, they were in the old ways today. They repented tomorrow and then went back the next day to the old ways. Vicious cycle. But I can learn something about God in that cycle. He received them every time. He forgave them every time. He loved them all the time. Remember that we are going from the effect to the cause. And these the changing of our ways don't happen just because we decide to change. There is something more, more profound that needs to happen in us. But let me give you a disclaimer right here before we continue. Repentance or correcting our ways don't save us. Amen? Amen. Because we do this or that, that doesn't mean that we are going to be saved. I'm not justified because of anything I have done. But because of everything Jesus has done. Does anyone here uh, is doubting that? See, I'm not, it's not because of what I do. It's because of what Jesus does. Repentance and renewal of our ways is a consequence. Is a what, friends? Consequence of an intimate and real relationship with God, with the God that transforms. Obedience is just a sign of love. Josiah experienced this. He was just eight years old. Now, how about you, friends? How about me? What are those things that I need to stop doing? What are those things that I need to start doing? How about me? What is that Passover that I have forgotten to celebrate as a, as a token of my trust in God. What is that that I have to go and assist in my life and take away and incorporate? What, is, what are those elements that I'm missing in my life? And so that's why I'm so called 
in my relationship with the Lord. Could be today, my renewal day. Could be today the renewal of my, of my, of my ways. But we're going from the effects to the cause. How did Josiah get there? Number one, he renewed his ways. Number two, he renewed his commitment. He renewed his commitment. I'm going to repeat that word, commitment. Commitment. Have you heard that word? Commitment. See, commitment is a very unpopular word today. Do you know? Very unpopular. The moment you offer something to people, people think about commitment. I do not have time for commitment. I'm not gifted for that commitment. I just don't want that commitment. Commitment is a very unpopular word today. And now, I'm not going to talk about nominating committee this morning. But I, I'm going to give you a, a just call uh, statistics on this word commitment. Just in one area. Lack of commitment in divorce. Why is it, studies show, that there is one reason why uh, people are getting divorced more and more and more. This study shows, reported, uh, that 75% of individuals and by at least one person in 94.4% of couples is because of lack of commitment. There is a moment when they say, I'm better by myself. Lack of commitment. Do you know why young people, young, young couples are not getting married? Commitment. Commitment. In chapter 23, verses 1 and 2 and 3, let's read it together so we can, we can have the context of this lack of uh, uh, renewal of, of, of commitment. This is what the Bible says in verses 1 through uh, 3. Now the king sent them to gather all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah, and with him all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Everyone was there, the priests and the prophets and all the people, both as small and, and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the house of the Lord. Then the king stood by a pillar and, and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of his covenant that were written in this book and all the people took a stand for the covenant. Amen. The people of Israel was a mess till this point. Josiah comes into the scene. And the first one, well, the first thing that he does is to renew a commitment, to make a promise again. See, see, this is the loving God that I'm here to talk about you, friends. He knows tomorrow you are going to go away from him again. But he receives, he accepts, he takes the promise you make today. A loving God doesn't see you how messed up you might become tomorrow. He sees you how committed you are today. So next time you think it's time for you to get committed, next time you think it's, it's time for you to get to make a new promise to the Lord, don't think about your limitations. Think about His power. Don't think about what you are not capable of doing. Think about the one that is able to do everything. Don't think about what is going to happen. Think about the one that has your tomorrow in His hand. Believe in the one that can change you. Believe in the one that can transform you. You don't have time. He's eternal. You don't have resources. Everything belongs to him. Friends, it is time for God's people to be renewed. To be renewed. Everyone went to the house of God. Everyone came to the house of God. It says verses 1 and 2. In, in verse 3 says, the king stood by, stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord. Everyone was present. Was representing everyone in this promise. 
When you read the Bible, friends, when you come to this book and find God's ways, God's will, God's plans for you, you must take a stand. You cannot be living the same way you were living before. You cannot be thinking the same way you were, living, you were thinking before. You cannot be the same person you were being before, friends. Your ways need to be God's ways. Even if you forget, and if you forgot, if you have forgotten, and if you have gone away from the promise you made, today is the renewal day. Friends, today is the renewal day. Don't worry about yesterday. Don't worry about the promise you made yesterday you, had, you haven't fulfilled. Because today is a brand new opportunity for you to be faithful to God. I don't know what happened. I don't, just don't remember much when I got married. My wedding day. I don't remember what happened what my three ministers said. I had three ministers in my wedding. I don't remember what they said. I don't remember who was there. I don't remember, I don't remember anything about my wedding. My mind was not with me that day. I just don't remember. But I remember one promise, one promise I made to that woman next to me. I promised to make Vivian the happiest woman in the world. That's the only thing that I remember. I don't know if I vo voiced it out. I, 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 thought, I think I just thought about it. That's the only thing that I remember. I remember to make my wife to be the happiest woman in the world. She's not here right now, but if she were here, she will, she will tell you loud and clear that I haven't fulfilled my promise. <laughs> but I'm not too worried. Because today is my brand new opportunity to reset my commitment with my wife and make her, make her what I promise I would make her. I promise to make her the happiest woman in the, in the world. And today, I'm putting my heart into that promise. Today, I'm making that promise honestly and with all my heart. I don't know about tomorrow. But I can promise today, she's here now. She's here. You can ask her. You can ask her. Friends, this is my point. This is my point. Many of us, when we got baptized, we were thinking about, Father, now I'm going to be this good person. Now I'm going to make this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to reach this person. I'm going to bring that person to you. And 10 years later, 20 years later, 40 years later, nothing, of you, nothing has happened all of your promises went and stayed there in the baptistry. Is that, if that is your case, do not panic because today is renewal day. It all begins with a renewal of your commitment, your promise, your covenant. How about you, friend? Will you renew your commitment with the Lord today? Do you have a new promise for Him today? Today is renewal day, the renewal of your commitment. The last one. This is the person that we read about, Josiah. Now you know why this, there was no other king like him. Now before him there was no king, verse 25 says. Now that before him there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart with all his soul and with all his might, according to the law, all the law of Moses, nor after him did any arise like him. Friends, Josiah was passionate about the Lord. He was passionate about what he knew. He was passionate about what he read. Friends and my young people here present, the environment won't give you that passion. Your friends will not give you that passion. The media will not give you that passion. That boy, that girl will not give you that passion. The only way for you to be re your passion to be renewed is coming to the one that can renew your ways. 
He's coming to the one that can accept your renewed commitment. He's coming to the one that can forgive you and forgive you and forgive you as many times as you need it. See, young people, don't blame your parents for your life. Because your dad was this way doesn't give you the right to be the same way. Because your mom was this way doesn't give you the okay to be that way. Don't blame your parents for your present life. Stop being accusing or putting it on the abuse you had when you were a child. No, it is time for you and for me to cut the pattern. Because you and I can be different. You have the opportunity to change the course as Josiah did. Do you hear who his grandparent was? His grandfather was? Do you hear who his, his father was? But do you hear what the Bible says about these men? There was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart, with all his soul. How do I do it? How do I renew this passion? How can I get this for me? Simple. Get to know the Lord. And you will get to love him. And once these two take place, you will not stop talking about him to your friends, to your co-workers, to your family members, to your neighbors, to your enemies. And you will even use words if you need them. And so we need to experience the renewal ourselves. We need to get into the renewal time, friends. The renewal of our ways. The renewal of our commitment, our promise, our covenant. The renewal of our passion from the Lord, for the Lord. Friends, today is renewal time. Brothers and sisters, my young people. I'm here to sadly report that Israel did not continue with the renewal that Josiah, Josiah brought to them. And because of that, they had to pay the consequences. It is after this that Nebuchadnezzar took the Israelites to captivity. They paid the consequences of going away from God again. They went back to their old ways. Friends, because of our carnal nature, we are prone to run away from God, His love, His ways. His covenant. And that is why we need Jesus. And that is why we need Jesus. Because as the people of Israel did, led by King uh, Josiah, we can also renew our covenant with Jesus today. And thus find the road back to our God. That is why Jesus said, I am the way. Way to where? Way to the Father. He is the renewal. He is the renewal that our hearts need, friends. He is the renewal that our lives need. He is the renewal that our souls need. Praise be the Lord, because today we can go to, back to Jesus and start all over again. Come to Jesus. Go to Jesus and have a brand new life. 